Okay. Hey, everybody. How's everyone doing? Let me kill the music here. Welcome to my first official Twitch stream. It's so awesome to see you all. And uh, hopefully tonight we can just have some fun uh, doing a project. Uh, the project in question for tonight is hanging the multi-board. If you were fortunate enough to be with me f during my kind of test streams that I was doing, you saw the multi-board up close and couldn't hang it at the time, which is good because now I can hang it for this show, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, one thing that I'm going to make sure to do for every stream, if we're doing a project or if I'm working on projects and uh, they're featured on the stream, I am going to make sure that there are links to the projects below the stream at all times. So down there you should see a link, I'm just double checking it myself, underneath projects for multi-board and it'll take you to the multi-board website so you can see all about this project that we'll be working on tonight. So uh, hello Glendon, hello zombie, hack monkey, yes! Uh, cool story. I uh, met Hack Monkey at our local um, micro center. Him and his son were, uh, I think, in the filament aisle before they moved the filament aisle and uh, got to talking. And uh, I talked to him about Murph, and him and his son ended up going to Murph and had a great time. And so, yeah, awesome guy. And thank you so much for, for coming into my Twitch stream. Kevin, of course, thank you so much again for helping me with some of my graphics and my, especially my logo. Uh, Zombie as well, thank you for helping with the graphics and the inspiration for the logo. Uh, Rebranding is never easy, and when you're not really a creative type like an artist, it, it tends to not flow right. It's like, I just need a J and an M. And... <laughs> no, it's like, there's, there's ways to make really cool logos, and people with creative minds are really good at that but I'm more of a logical guy that's why I'm really good at network technology so um, Ms. Liz is in the house hello Pez Liz and uh, m much thanks for uh, all of them Liz Kevin and Zombie and Glendon and Pink for talking me back into the game I guess it is or for inspiring me to begin streaming again, to begin making content. Um, and Daddy Wazzy's in, hey Daddy Wazzy. <laughs> oh. Anyway, so yeah, basically this isn't the normal setup that you're gonna see in my normal streams. And I say normal streams, but right now the streams are quite dynamic as the way that I'm thinking of how this Twitch is gonna go. Uh, Hey, my Linux pals in chat. Oh, what is your what is your Linux flavor of choice? I am curious about that. Um, uh, but like I was saying, this is going to be a very dynamic experience. So it's going to range from sitting and chatting, or maybe looking at new printers, new technology, stuff like that, to doing the projects and hybrid robotics. Nice to see you. Also a Linux user. Oh, all right, and then Vinny's in, RC Maniac, hey man. Ubuntu, yeah. I, I use Ubuntu a lot, but I also, I, I've kind of gotten out of CentOS and uh, use Red Hat a little bit here and there just because I need to for my job. But uh, Ubuntu is my personal uh, go-to when I build, build a server. So I built my own website server, so that's on its way. It's up and coming. I'm um, just trying to figure out what I'm going to put on it because I don't really have anything to put on it right now, but eventually I'm going to figure that out. Um, but yeah, I'm hosting that web server myself on Ubuntu with a LAMP stack, so yeah, it's, it's a very great uh, server, lightweight, um, love Linux. Uh, yeah, I'm a Windows user, but work is Mac and prior job was Red Hat, Ubuntu CentOS, yeah. So I, I was a a Windows user forever and ever and ever and then I became a Mac user when the tools for being able to do IT work became more prevalent for a Mac. Um, so once all those kind of caught up to where the PC were, 
we started going Mac just because uh, Mac's integrated terminal, because it's built on top of, uh, uh, you know, it's got Bash and all that, so it's, it's built on top of a semi-Linux term or a kernel. But the, the the fact that you have an inbuilt terminal already and you don't need to use uh, you know putty or something like that, it's it's nice to just pop a terminal, be able to access both your subsystem, your system, and any other systems that you SSH into or God forbid Telnet into. Anyway, I'm getting a little off the rails talking about technology. So yeah, this what this is going to look like going forward. It's going to be projects. It's going to be tech and a lot of random stuff. So I have gotten into Dungeons and Dragons quite heavily again. So I've been 3D printing these minifigs on my little uh, Elgu Mars and 3D printed this holder too. Um, but what you'll see as we go throughout the night and I do this project, you'll, you'll see my paint set up and all that stuff so expect like miniature painting streams here and there um i i it's been like a couple of decades since i actually painted a mini so it, it'll be a fun learning process and i'd love for you all to come along with me on that process um it's a cool mini yeah this is uh thindrill I, oh, my camera's here this is thindrill I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to make him a sorcerer. I don't, he, whatever, he's going to be wielding a lot of lightning spells because I just have this weird fixation with with lightning in D and D. So, um, yeah, that was printed on the Elgu Mars three three. Yeah. Um, so yeah, painting minifigs is going to be probably one of the things I do. Uh, printer maintenance and just general 3D printing technology back here in my other side of the basement. That's where all the 3D printing stuff is on this shelf here. You can see my server set up over there and my horizontal runs, all that stuff. But um, yeah, since we're gonna be hanging a maker board that took me forever to print today, I figured I would just go ahead and set up everything over here and I have good shots of the wall in which we will be working on. Here's another shot from over here. So hopefully you'll be able to get to see a lot of the cool methods that I use to hang a wall. <laughs> nah, it's not really. Actually, I'm sure that, you know, probably Kevin specifically is going to be cringing for most of this uh, particular stream because of the way that I'm intending on hanging this board all at the same time and just drilling as I go <laughs> so oh man so let's talk about maker board what is it why did I decide to do it and basically it's simply this this is the core of what makes maker board uh, I'm sorry, multi-board, a multi-board. Um, it is an, a square of octagons. I know you, there's a lot of people who know about the hex wall. This is a lot like the hex wall, but it's made with octagons and it has a whole lot of different features in it as well because it's got threading built into every single hole, even the small holes. It is really really strong well designed um, there's actually several adapters that you can take uh, stuff from a hex board and mount it to the multi-board um, one thing that I really like about the multi-board and if I can find it there the fact that the small holes which are also threaded are also sized a little bit of a tight fit but that's because this is bent anyway yeah I need to fix my bin but as you can see the the multi board is this has the same size uh, same distance between the small holes as a regular peg board which is what I'm coming from so that's neat because I'll be able to utilize my felt is falling 
I'll be able to utilize the existing pegs that I have, which are usually just, you know, they're, they're all over the place right now. Basic pegboard pegs. Um, and I'll be able to put those back on and use those. And I'll be able to use all the cool custom things that come along with multi-board. So the trick with multi-board is it, how are you going to mount it? Where are you going to mount it? Um, so for example, Kevin has his mounted flush against his wall. So if he wanted to use some kind of pegboard attachment, he wouldn't be able to because there's no room in the back. Um, but that's not something that he was concerned with, so he went ahead and did a flush uh, install, which is a very strong install. The other side is if you want to do a offset install that you can use regular pegs with, or you know, there's some other stuff that you can use with the multi-board where you need to kind of get behind it, um, then that's a good option. The thing is, is that you just have to be careful about the mounting of this thing if you're going to be mounting a lot of heavy things. Uh, for example, here is mine. And so, first off, it's got screw holes everywhere for the mounting, which is great. It's going to make it nice and strong. But second, I have these little standoffs that match the distance of the standoff that screw into the back of those tiny holes. And what these do is it adds additional, uh, I don't know, footprint points onto the wall that stress can be pressed against and help keep the ball, like help keep the whole thing from deforming um, while you're mounting it. So I went ahead and printed all those out. I think I've got 48 total on this board, four per square. Uh, the board itself is three by three, I'm sorry, three by six. And um, that is roughly, those are the eight position grids. You can print these grids out in a whole bunch of different sizes. I think all the way down from like four all the way up to nine, I think. There might be a bigger one than nine. Um, I know there's a 10, yeah. So I went with eights. Eights really were the perfect size for what I was trying to replace. So um, why I'm going to make this work simply, Let's just take a look at some of the options here. So this guy here is going to be a tape holder. It's going to have little hangers on it that hold my various types of tape that I use. Electrical, Kaplan, uh, marking, or masking tape, um, all the various tapes that I have. Gaff tape, if I can get one thick enough. Um, but this goes onto the multi-board. So this is going to be great. Um, the other thing that I'm really excited about is this guy. And shout out to uh, K2 Kevin for this design. It is a boom arm. This is the K2 boom, or this is the, the multi-board boom arm. Um, and it is an incredibly adaptive system. So if you want to mount something on a boom, he has a way for you to mount it on the boom. This one just happens to have a little threading on it for a webcam because my idea is to have it on there, have a webcam pointing down on my workspace. So you can get a top-down view if I'm doing paintings or something like that. Um, other than that, he's got like a phone holder for it and a clamp and all kinds of stuff that you can use it with. The other cool thing is, is that these are all within the, the multi-board size universe. So multi-board uses basically three sides of threads really big, big, and small, or maybe more. It might be four sizes of threads. Uh, but anyway, he made it all backwards compatible. So if you've got multi-board objects that you want to mount onto the boom, if you've got like a cool holder for a light, or the one of the best things is that he published his um, cable management clips. So you you screw those cable management clips into these tiny holes and then you can run the cable along from a charger for your cell phone if you're doing a cell phone mount or you can run the cable from a webcam if you're doing a webcam mount so 
yeah, this thing is cool. And I can't wait to, to play around with it and mess with it. I've got lots of different uh, attachments for it. Um, just to make sure I can get it where I want it. But yeah, so that's just like a small portion of what the, the multi-board can do. Over on my A1 bed, the printer that I'm not supposed to be printing on, the printer that was once dead but now lives once again. I'll go ahead and pull the bed off. I've got more things here. So basically, these two guys are... Ooh, get that. These two guys are mounts for these little guys. So I can hang these on my board. And then I've got some clip holders, like for the angled clips, cutters. Got those, got a scissors holder. Um, yeah, so. And then I think that, yeah, this one's a calipers holder. So this one holds a set of digital calipers. So the amount of stuff that's out there is amazing. Plus the, <laughs> the guy who designed it, um, he, his name is Keep Making on Things. He has a bunch of files that you can download so you can remix or edit pretty much anything you want to into something that is compatible with his multi-board, which is really cool. That's a cool open source uh, thing, project. That's the thing I don't really like about the A1 is sometimes it's hard to get the plate to line up on there properly. That's a strong magnet. Okay. So yeah, I think without any further talking from me about things, I'm gonna grab my tea. I've also got water, but I needed some tea for energy. Aha. Tea in my Joe to go cup. Ah, this is a lovely English breakfast by Twinnings Tea. That's tonight's tea of the stream. Stream tea. Stream tea. There you go. I'm going to be sweating pretty soon, so I don't know why I'm drinking tea. Other than that, I am going to stick with my liquid death. Delicious liquid death, sparkling water um, with, lim with a little lime and a little bit of agave for blah, sweetness. Uh, okay, see you in a bit, Vinny. But that, but that. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit the project, which is this wall here. Oh, I'm going to try my best to keep up with chat. I've got a monitor over here that put it nice and large. So, yeah. But when I'm looking here, I'm not looking at chat. So what I'm thinking about right here is where I want it, which is where parts of my old pegboard were. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to secure this down with a screw in one spot before I start marking where I need to put drywall anchors at. That was all the stuff to the bottom of the floor. That's okay, I don't care anymore. So I'm just gonna do that for now. And then I'm going to get out my trusty level. Lay that across. Okay. So looking to see where my studs are so I can go straight into a stud. Just kind of get this thing up here for now. There we go. All right, we're done. Good stream.
<laughs> oh. Techno side, what's up? Welcome in. Okay. So the board is on there in two spots. That's going to let me go ahead and mark every single other spot that a screw is going to go. And that's uh, going to be a mixture of going straight into drywall. Or I'm, I'm sorry, not straight into drywall. Don't go straight into drywall. Going straight into the studs or having to use an anchor. And so once I got all these marked, I'll know what I need to put where. Sally's Prince, good evening. Good man on using the level. I, I really try. There's so many things that I just eyeball, but this is one of those things I wanted to get as level as possible, just given the weight that's gonna be on it. So all I'm doing now is I've got this felt red pin, which is like the perfect diameter to get in and mark where all the screw holes are. And I'm just gonna try to apply pressure as I go so there's no deforming while I'm marking. And I know this is riveting and exciting content, but it's just, you know, sometimes things just have to be done. Am I still making marks? Still making marks. Dum, 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 dum. Okay. This drywall is not even painted. It was just hung and left. Okay, it looks like I'm going to have at least one. Oh, no, I dropped my pen. <laughs> And it's mixed up with all the other stuff that dropped. Okay, I found it. Got it. It's mixed up with, oh, nope, that was last thought. Sorry, got hung up on last thought. It looks like I'm gonna have an external row that is in studs, which is great. And since I got this one in a stud over here, I know at least one middle row will be in studs, which is great. I want to get as many into studs as possible. This row looks like it's going to go in studs too. Did I already mark all those? I did. I'm just doing bottoms now. Bottoms up, bottoms up, up. Oh, this one's also going to hit. Wow. It's like these eight tiles are spaced appropriately for studs or something. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I think I marked everything. I think. Making marks with the multi-board. Yeah, buddy. Okay. So now that that is done, I'm going to go ahead and remove my... Temp screws. Oh man, those dots are tiny. Oh, well, that one took a chunk of drywall with it. I didn't necessarily not help it to not do that. Or, or well, you know what I mean. Okay, so now I'm just looking along studs. Just gonna do a quick line. So if it's close enough, I know I can just put it in a stud. I don't know how close that one is to a stud, so I'm gonna be doing some testing, trying to hit a stud with it, or not, we'll see. Oh, that one's definitely going in a stud. There's a whole lot of these going into studs, which is awesome. The fewer uh, anchors I have to use, the better. So as far as anchors, 
Come on. I'll be using these guys, the screw in anchors. Yeah, it should hopefully be nice and sturdy for sure. Um, that's the goal, at least. I'm just going to punch a quick hole so I have a start point for this guy. And uh, let's see what happens here. Like a glove. <laughs> okay, so I guess I'm just going to kind of work across. And uh, I don't think I need to drill. I just need to poke. Just need to poke it with something. So I'm just going to get a quick little tool. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Uh, yeah. This will work nicely for that. You want to see Alt Cam 2? Here's Alt Cam 2. So <laughs> there's, uh, there's my first anchor in, anchors away. And all the anchor marks I've made, you, can, you can't probably see the red dots from where you are. But um, they're there, so I now know where I'm going and what needs what. So the cool thing about the multi-board system is it's a dynamic platform, so you really don't have to settle with what you have. You can go up another layer uh, level or over another level or just keep building it out until it covers the whole wall. So it's not like a pegboard that you cut down to size, and then what you have is what you have. And if you needed more space, you just have to get another pegboard and cut it down to size. So this is a little less wasteful. Pico! Pico! Okay. You have to, you have to hit a stud on your multi-board? Oh, man. Ah, sorry. Hydration break. I'm really going for a liquid death sponsorship at some point. I'm not even, a, even an affiliate yet, but, you know, you might as well start, uh, start early, right? Okay, I'm going to poke holes in my drywall. And these are just where anchors are going. I don't know if I'll be able to... That one sounds like I can hit that stud, so I'm going to try that first. a stud and I don't like this tool for the job the right tool for the right job is very important but often missing Aha! that's what I was looking for to begin with that's the studs okay so that's pretty solid right there I don't know about right there I'm gonna test it I'm going to wreck it. I hope everyone is having a beautiful Sunday. Oh, yeah, that's going into something. So that's another row that's... Mm, lots of studs. Oh, I'm going to take my drink away from here. There's tons of dust. Grab a drink of tea. Ah, man, that's good tea. Okay, so let the poking continue. Poke. Okay. Oh, yeah, I did have to end up going there on these. On stud, not on stud. Yeah, so this is the interesting thing about, you know, creating content live. You got to endure the mundane tasks before you get to the exciting stuff. That's okay. They have to be done. It's a life lesson. It's done. It's done, 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 done. Switch to the alt. There. I don't know if this is any better. About the same. Studs on the outside of this one. Or 
Sorry, not studs, but anchors. And the reason why I'm doing this is it just, it makes it a little easier to get those anchors to start. They have decent drill tips on them, but even with those drill tips, it's hard to get off the mark, or it's easy to get off the mark. And when you're wanting, when you're having to align something so precisely, um, it's just better to use this method, in my opinion. Here we go. Okay. These are super handy. I love these kinds of anchors. They are a little messy, but worth it in the end, in my opinion. Brett's in the chat. Hey, Brett. As you can see, I'm doing something exciting and riveting right now. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. My channel is all about putting drywall anchors into drywall. It's ASMR for guys. You know, that's not really that bad of an idea. An ASMR channel for guys, it's just nothing but like power tools and stuff. A lawnmower running, a weed whacker, someone Revving up a chainsaw. Something, something, John Deere tractor noise. You'd have different types of ASMR, like you'd do the, the Bosch types, like, and then you'd get like a DeWalt, and then you'd get a Milwaukee. ASMR for dudes. Hey Kevin, how long did it take you to mount your board? I'm curious. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can beat it and actually properly hang mine. <laughs> Just kidding. That's a whole lot of anchors. Grief. To move some stuff out of the way now that I'm lower and get real cramped real fast. And I know you can't really see that I'm working down below here. I actually did one piece at a time while printing, so maybe two days. How? Two days? I can beat that. <laughs> I'm just gonna do it all at once because I'm a madman. deep I can get these. I prefer for most of the part to be resting against the drywall versus the anchor for sure. So if I can get these anchors in a little past uh, the paper on the drywall. Oh yeah, and by the way, this Fantic little screwdriver is a phenomenal buy. It comes in a 
carry case and everything and it is a powerful little son of a gun and very handy and easy to use because it's nice and tiny it even has torque settings on it and that's what I'm using to put in these anchors I'll be doing the actual screws with my proper driver because they are going to require a little more torque than this thing can produce. Okay, I'm just keeping track. Oh, I've got some work to do over here. Okay, so I do have to get these done over here, and I think I'm going to have to move this a little to the side. That's a rework station and also a 12-volt power supply on the bottom, which is what used to hook into my ham radio and power my ham radio, my base station. 73s, everyone, who's a ham bone. What slide for the acres? Wall dogs, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kevin did 3D print some of these, which is, you know, I, I have 3D printed some of these too and used them, but I think he printed all of them. It's a good thing I bought a big box of these. I mean, as you can tell, this multiboard's going to use uh, a lot of points to mount to the wall, which is awesome. That's just going to help with the strength overall. Back that out a bit. Get in there, you dog. All right. I'm going to start this one at the bottom. Good, looking good. Okay, I think I've got four more and I'm ready. I think the rest of them are all stud now, are going into a stud. Last one, I think. Okay, that is a lot of anchors. Holy smokes. All right. So now that the anchors are in, let's go ahead and mount up. I'll not catch my mic wire on it. So what I'm going to try to do here, I think I'm going to pop the middle in. These aren't technically the screws that go with these anchors, but they're number eights, just like the anchors, the screws that come with the anchor, just slightly different threading. Right, it's slight, the pitch is slightly different on the threading, but we'll, we'll see how this works. Yummy. Sally says, I generally get the metal ones. I always say I want to be able to hang 
from my fixtures. Are they okay? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. The only reason why I didn't go with like metal ones is because the fact that I wasn't going to use the screws that come with them. So if there is a different thread pattern in here that's slightly off with the pitch or the spacing on the threading, uh, the plastic one will still hold it because it'll just bite into all of that. So, okay. Everything is falling down. That's just to check my work later. Okay. All right. Okay, are we ready to do it? Are we ready to mount the board? Let's do it. Oh, my battery died on this. Okay, that's okay. I have another one in this one. Full battery. Oh, yeah, that works. Okay, let's check. On the money, honey. Okay. I can already see though where things are going to be off a little bit, maybe. So we'll attack that as we go. I'm going to go ahead and get into at least one full row of anchors. That's not the one I was working on. <laughs> this is the one I was working on. Uh, this is why I shouldn't stream so late. Dad by day, haptic handyman by night. Switch to using the actual ones, just on the safe side. I don't like the ones that came with it because they're not countersunk, and this is definitely a countersunk thing. And I want to be able to still use the spots that have the bolts in them or the screws in them. So, Jano's in the house. Welcome in. Nice to have you. said, who's in the house? BJ. Wait. That's going pretty good. That's real nice, Clark. Real nice. All right, let's go ahead and check the level again. Still on the money. I think we're going to be okay. I don't want to adjust the clutch. on. Good deal. Make sure they're all clipped in. And the 
if I'm correct, this one should go straight into a stud. Yep. It's amazing what having a fresh battery does too in your drill. Actually, I think all of these are going into studs. Yeah, these both, all, all of these are stud bound. strong. Um, I should add also that there's going to be caps, like little part B's that go on here that secure the board to the mounts. So I know it looks like it just, it's just going to pop right off right now. And that's right. It would pop off right now if I tried to hang stuff. But that's where the other part comes in. Okay. This is actually kind of relaxing. coming together. Quick break for liquid refreshments and some chat. How are, how are all of you beautiful people out there? Hopefully well, I hope. Anyone got anything exciting going on or any projects that you're working on? Questions? I always love answering questions. They can be pretty much about anything. And I'll do my best. It is a marvelous looking multi-board, isn't it? Can't wait. I, I'm already, I already know I'm going to go up higher with it. I mean, that's, look at all that space up there that could be multi-board and isn't, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go up at least two more tiles, maybe three more tiles. If I go up three more tiles, it'll be a perfect square. So I, I do love symmetry. Exciting. I am watching Joe Mike. I am the embodiment of exciting. Cheers. Here's my tea. Just going back and forth between the tea and the um, liquid death because, you know, this kind of dehydrates you and then the other one hydrates you. <laughs> Should make a pattern. Okay, yeah, I actually was thinking about doing that. Um, initially, I was going to try to make this because um, I was doing the black and white and I was going to try to do like a yin-yang swirl. But when I realized that it was going to be rectangular like this, I was like, I can't do a yin-yang swirl. And I didn't want to do like the offset thing to make it look like a tile floor in an old 50s diner. One, because I don't think I'd really like that. And two, my stigmatism would go crazy with that pattern like it does anytime there is the black and white tile on the floor at a 50s style diner. I'm looking at you, Steak and Shake. But yeah, once I get it up uh, another three tiles or so, it's game on. I've got a square and can almost do the bits kind of design. Okay, where were we? Gotta get the bottoms. Yeah, okay. So many screws. This is what should have been called the screw unit. Because this is what it takes. It takes all the screws. Okay. Come on, paint. Gotta get out of the way.
Oh, I could rip those right off of it right now. These things are so on there, on there. Checkerboard. No, the checkerboard is the black and white. <laughs> that would that would drive me crazy just looking at it because stigmatism, especially with high contrast patterns like black, white, black, white, with with a stigmatism, it is like, yeah, it, it's quite the sensory overload. I got both down there, good. All right, one row completely done. Actually, I think I have more than one row completely done. Two rows completely done. Working on another one that is anchors. Good, good. So now you can kind of see why I put those T stands in here. Because if you put something here and it starts pulling on it, the T stands below it are actually going to help support that weight. RGB behind it. Oh man, that'd be cool. I'm not a huge RGB nerd, but at the same time, I do like cool lighting. So I think having like a blue glow around the whole outside of it or a blue glow actually shooting in would be awesome. Oh, man, you're, you're going to make me spend money. <laughs> make me spend more and more money. <laughs> oh, I already put a screw in that one. <laughs> that would do it. That would do it. It doesn't have to necessarily be RGB because I guarantee you if I got an RGB light behind that, it would never shift away from blue. That's just the truth. <laughs> know thyself. And I know that I like blue, so. <laughs> Although if I did one for my daughter, I could do pink or purple or both. And she'd probably go 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 for that. Okay, I'm pretty sure these are gonna hit studs. Yeah. Express only blue special. Yeah, that would be a AliExpress for sure. Well. One more on this row. By the way, I don't like this rework kit. Um, I know you can't see it very well in that shot, but it's currently trying to fall apart on me. Um, it wasn't bad at the time, but I have since gotten a Hako one, which is out in the garage, which far exceeds so many other rework kits that you can get your hands on online, especially Amazon. Let's finish up this row. I was a hardcore Weller only uh, user. I was, I was almost a, a Weller snob, you could say. But uh, it was actually Chuck Hellebuck, uh, Chep on YouTube, who um, I had a conversation with him uh, at Murph one year, I believe. And he was talking about how he had just gotten this Hako soldering iron to replace his Weller and how he was absolutely blown away by the performance for the price. And so I had to give it a try myself because I also had a dying Weller. They do that, Wellers, yeah, well, a lot of us have Wellers from 1970s, 
so because um, I inherited mine. Uh, so they just die. That just happens, especially the pots and everything else on it that eventually wear down and just uh, can't control the temperature anymore. But uh, yeah, the Hako stuff, I was incredibly surprised by it. I'm really glad that uh, Chuck let me in on that little bit of information. Nice. So far, this is working beautifully. I wasn't sure how easy, one, it would be to mount the entire board at the same time instead of doing it in pieces, and two, how well these screws would work with these anchors that they're not really meant to work with. But I'm very pleasantly surprised and happy that it's working. Because I really like these screws. They're countersunk and they've got just the right amount, right a bit of them, ah, right amount of non-thread. For this uh, wall. Medic in the house. Sir, how are you? Feels like it's been a minute. Has it been a minute? I still have your little 3D Medic uh, keychain that you gave me at Murph one year. It is actually in a box of my keepsakes from the, uh, the various uh, 3D printing get togethers. But yeah. Man, so great that you're in here. I'm so glad. Thanks for, for coming in. See, when I change my name to Joe Mike Makes, it's because of this kind of stuff. Like, yeah, 3D printing is involved with this, but most of the printing you would have seen on Maker Deck because I was live streaming the printing onto Maker Deck. And so. Yeah, this part is actually the making and mounting. So mounting is also part of making. It's like I'm explaining that to a five-year-old, which I have to do often because I have a five-year-old. So I apologize if that sounded like I would be like, this is a dinner. Snap in, snap off, snap in, snap off, the snappers. Oh man. So Vince, what you been up to? Still doing the 3D printing? Come on, get in there. Man, that's a toughie. Am I going into, uh, hold on, I'm going to go right around the back of this wall and make sure that I'm not drilling into something that I shouldn't be drilling into, like um, electrical conduit or anything like that. I don't think there is any on this side, so I think we're good. That's probably just an ornery piece of 2x4. Just an ornery piece of 2x4, which we're lucky. Yeah, that one went in much better. Four more peeps, I think. Only four more. Get in there. <laughs> Did they use a freaking steel beam in there? Good grief.
One more. All right. Let me just double check my work and make sure I got screws in. Ha 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 ha. That's why we double check. <laughs> All right. Looking good. Oh, two more. Man, my ADD is killing me. Okay. Success. Making firefighting themed locker nameplates to sell. Ooh, that sounds like really cool. Let me put this guy on a charger at some point, but I think we're done with actual mounting. Now that's all that's left is there are these uh, top snaps that go on top of this, which keeps everything nice and together and from falling over and these go like that so this secures the board to your mounts so that's a double it fooled me yeah so I have quad mounts I've got dual mounts and I've got single mounts all across this board in their respective locations. Um, golly. This is fun. <laughs> I hope I printed enough of these. I counted it. But that looks so much less than what I need, but again, it's probably going to be right on the money. Unless I ADHD'd while I was doing this too. Okay, one more quad. There we go. So now let's move on to the dualies. are pretty much what you use around the edges. That's where you mostly utilize your duels and your singles. Anywhere where you have four tiles connect, you want to use a quad. Anywhere where two tiles connect, that's a, a dual. And then on the corners are where you use your single ones. Ooh, tight. I did opt to do the tighter. They give you different tolerances in um, the mounts and the snap-ins, uh, which is good because if your printer isn't really dialed in well, you could do the standard ones and they'll be tight, but if you did the tight ones, it might be too much. Um, so these were printed on my bamboo, which the tolerances are great. So I went ahead and went with the tight one. and. They're tight, but they're going together, so. Hopefully that'll add a little extra strength to the whole system. Okay. Okay, duels are done. Time for the singles. Just got four of these bad boys. And an extra one to boot. There she is. That is a fully mounted, ready to receive awesome accessories multi-board. Let's go ahead and put one on there. I'm just curious. I think we're gonna put K2 Kevin's 
multi board boom on it first. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to bridge to, because it's going to be relatively high. I also need to make sure that I have some little snaps available because I got to put in these little T-nuts, which gives it a, uh, oh, I got to take this thing off first so I can actually screw these in. Goodbye. I'm going to grab my trusty tool, also a K2 Innovation. And hopefully this will help me if I get to a point where I need to actually, does this do anything for the T-nuts? <laughs> oh yeah, it does. Yeah, it's got an open spade on it. Okay. Nothing on that end, it goes on this end. All right, ready to mount the T-nuts. Like I said, these little ones, the pegboard holes, they are threaded as well. That's why this system is so awesome. Like everything is threaded. Everything is threaded. There we go. It's kind of in line there. Nice and tight. Toit, toit like a tiger. Again, if you're interested in this particular project, the, the multi-board project, the link is below. That'll take you to multiboard.io, which is the homepage for this entire thing. And then that links you to the various things pages where everything is posted as far as STLs are concerned. Um, you basically can get a good idea of the whole system itself and the potential of what you can do with the system and if it would be a good system for you to utilize. Uh, it was one of those systems that I saw on things. I was like, that's neat, but then really never thought about building it until I started seeing like some of the cool aspects of it, like having the threading in everything, including the base octagons. They're all threaded. And I'll show you that here in a sec. But yeah, this is makerboard, I'm sorry, multiboard.io, and the link is below. So those T-nuts are in, that's nice and strong. Oh yeah, that's good. That's real good. So now I can put in this guy. Come on. Okay, now I got a swivel arm. And if I need to extend this out, I've got additional pieces to, to do that. And I can just keep printing pieces and extend it out and put an inline swivel in case I'd want to bring it out like that in just a little bit if I'm going straight on with my shot. Um, that's going to be one of the primary things that I'll be using this arm for, which is cool. That's so fun. All right, now here is the thing that I was going to show you with the, the regular octagons. So this tape holder that I showed you earlier, it actually uses a different mounting method. So it doesn't go straight into the board. It uses these little nubs, which I gotta get out, it takes four of them. So these screw straight into the octagons and provide a slip-on surface that this guy just slides onto like that. And then there's these little itty bitty, itty bitty little notches where it, it locks into place. So thanks Kev for getting the link up. And so probably more than likely, I'm gonna want my tape over here because that's where I had it before. So I'll go off a little bit 
and I'm going to use uh, this tool actually has a little wrench in it just for this. Oh, that's tight. Toit toit. Or did I hit the bottom? Don't know. Seems like it's off. Oh no, only part of it's threaded. I wonder if I printed the wrong ones. Because that's going to... That's going to put this off the board a bit. So it's not going to be as supportive. There were several versions of this. And I'm pretty sure I printed off one that has a slight standoff on it. Which I don't want. But I can give you a general idea of, of what's going on here. Even so, okay, so now that those are there, and I, I didn't space it right, which of course I didn't, because I didn't look. Bye. And so now this slides on that, and you got a tape holder. So really what I would need to do is I need to reprint the parts that screw in and get the ones that go down flush, because this thing is designed to be mounted flush. But that's still a really cool uh, method of mounting things when you don't want to print something with a lot of support because it has to have a, a thing on it, a little snap on it. Um, I've got various snaps here that I don't have anything to do with right now, but I was going to, I just printed them out so I could have some snaps on the board. And that's one of those load bearing ones. Or strong snap, I can't remember what they call it. Okay. I think, you know, that's pretty good. That's good work for a day or for a stream. Um, one thing that I am planning on doing for sure is these paints. I found online that there is a, a multi-board attachment for these exact size paints. So I probably will just bring them all the way across the bottom and have them on the multi-board, free up some space on the actual tabletop itself. Because um, right now they're, they're just kind of hanging out on the tabletop, which is fine. But I think it would be cool to have them on the board. And there's bloop. But yeah, so let's go ahead and put up a, another snap. So when you deal with the snaps, basically this is the main mounting mechanism, which is just, it is what it is, which is a snap. So um, that one holds scissors, which I'm not even sure if I have a pair of scissors down here at the moment. They're probably actually in the, where my, yeah, there they are. Scissors go there. Excellent. Um, let's do these, which are supposed to be pliers or snips or whatever. Oh, and here's an awesome thing. So this one has a, the smaller push-in fitting, which pushes into a larger snap like the one I showed you. That's a regular snap. And that's a regular snap. So it goes into that once you get this in there. Um, I'll put that about the same spot, maybe a little over, and push this in like that. 
Oh man, this is awesome. <laughs> so yeah, s snips go there. And uh, I should put a pair of pliers there. There we go. Pliers in the back, snips in the front. Hopefully you can see that okay. Looks great. I think it's time for a celebratory drink. Woo! Tea time. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I could put some Lagavulin in here. But yeah. I think I'll just stick with the tea. All right. What else do I got? I got a caliper holder with a brim that I need to take off real quick. Okay, so which calipers are going to go up on the wall? Let's see, classic calipers. Yeah, I'll put the, the Nico on there. Got too many sets of calipers. Okay, I, t I take that back. That's There's no such thing as too many sets of calipers. Um, so I'm gonna put these at the top. Maybe right above all that. No, that hits the scissors. There you go. Now it's holding my calipers. Woohoo! Now the real one I'm interested in. Ah, got some support I need to remove from this right quick. That's quick enough. <laughs> Man, I love bamboo. <laughs> their support, their their default support profile is just so freaking good. It just, mm. all the years of blooding myself from removing support. Um, okay, so this I think I'm going to maybe put on the tops here. And it is a large screw-in type, so it's going to take advantage of the threads in the bare octagon there. Um, so let's start. There's no offset to this, so it kind of has to go in the middle. Ah. Well, that's interesting. That was made with an 8mm offset in mind. Not a 15. Man, it's supposed to go like that. There it is. Beauty, beauty, beautiful. Look at that. Oh, man. Need to tighten it up on there, but geez louise, that's so nice looking. Support removal. <laughs> like it's even a thing now. Golly. Let me clean up some of the stringing because it's made out of PETG. Okay, and so where can you go? You want to go below? Yeah, I'll eventually hit the paints. I don't want to do that. So we'll offset it by one. There we go. Look at that. Man, that looks good. I'm just looking at seeing what you guys can see because it's a little dark, and I apologize for that. Here, maybe if I do this. No, nope, that makes it worse, kind of. But yeah, so I've got my drivers up there. Let me find that other battery. I'll just go ahead and put it in here until I get my charger out. Make sure it sits in the middle there. This one's a little large, but it fits just fine. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really need to 
get up there. I don't think I've got anything else made. Um, so now I'm going to take this really neat tool that Kevin remixed, and I'm just going to pop it up there in the corner for when I when I need it to put more snaps or whatever in. So, oh, and he also has another tool. Emma, and this is just a puller. So if you need to get like the a snap out or a top off of one of these mounts, you just get the puller and pop it off. Real easy to use. Um, and I've got a snap for that to sit in. It doesn't really need to be this kind of snap, but you know what? I've got them, so I'm using them. It just will store right there like a glove. There you go. There's a good shot of it. Not fully populated by any means, but at least enough to show you some of the potential of what this is going to become. Um, and again, let me see. Some of these I had to bend, so I don't know. Yeah, they're just slightly off, but there you go. A basket of crap <laughs> that was on my pegboard, and I can put it on the multi-board, which is awesome. Um, but it's not going to be there. I don't want it there at all. I just want to show you. So, ah, man, what a cool system. What an absolutely cool system. You sit here for now. So that basically is the multi-board. Very, very, very neat. Um, way cooler than I was even expecting it to be. I mean, it's really cool in your head when you're going through the different prints and the different options, but when you actually see it real, real, realized on your wall, you just can't help but smile. It's just it's so neat oh so now begins the hunt for more attachments more accessories for this thing i've already got several saved they are all over the place from printables maker world and things and so uh yeah i just have to get a good collection going because I, I need stuff to like store you know regular screwdrivers in I need stuff to store my brushes in I definitely want to print the holders for my paints and whatever else oh all, all my this is all my uh, exacto stuff now, I'm not sure if I want to put this on the board because I really like this system because <laughs> uh, it has a blade disposal unit you put your old blades and then this comes out and you can Either throw it away and print another one, or you just empty it out. But either way, you got to make sure that the blades are safe when they go into the garbage and that they're not going to cut up your trash bag. And then a garbage man's hand. Um, so we'll, we'll play around and see what we do with that. Anyway, it is almost 9.30. Hey, Granny. How you doing? You came in at just the right time for us to <laughs> end the stream. Um, so yeah, I mean, pretty much I won't, Kevin. I just don't know who to raid into at the moment, except maybe, maybe make maker deck. I don't have a whole lot. Wait, hold on. Now Jang is going. Well, I think, I think I'm going to raid into maker deck just because of the full circle of all of this. Uh, oh, great. So you did get to see some things. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this stream. We're coming on the hour 30 mark, which is exactly kind of where I wanted to be. And so I am really impressed that it all worked out like that pretty much perfectly. Um, Sometimes things just do that. Anyway, so we're going to raid 
into the Maker Deck. And for those of you who don't know the Maker Deck, which I'm guessing everyone in here probably knows the Maker Deck, Maker Deck is a stream that showcases 3D printers printing. It's a community on top of that with a Discord server and just pretty much anything that you want community wise, you can get it through Maker Deck. Um, if you're curious, you can stream your printer on Maker Deck and be part of the show. It's just Maker's Making. Like, yeah, exactly. Maker's Making. And, um, yeah, that's really all there is, all there is to it. So I'm glad to be back. This was fun. This was really fun. And I hope that by next Sunday, um, I'll have another great project for you. I do have a list of stuff, but I'm still waiting on some items to come in so I can actually do it. Uh, one of those is going to be a Hydra conversion from start to finish of an AMS. So I've got another AMS that won't be here for several weeks because they're back ordered. But I've already printed out all the Hydra parts. And so when that gets in, one Sunday we'll go through the entire process of converting your AMS into a Hydra AMS if you're a Bamboo X1C or P1P, P1S user. So if that's something that interests you, Keep an eye out on the schedule. Keep an eye out on my socials because I'll be posting there as to what is coming up. And then join in for my third Hydra conversion. I've already done my tube back there. Anyways, uh, I'm going to see if I can do this raid thing. Is there a timer on it? Raid slash raid, right? Maker deck. Okay, everyone, have an awesome night. We're raiding into Maker Deck, or morning, wherever you are. Have an aw, or, mm, we're raiding into Maker Deck. So, just remember that makers are makers, but we're all makers in our own right. But at the end, the best we can hope for is just making the world a better place. So if you're gonna make, do it that way, and I'll see you later. There we go. Bye, guys.